forgiven us this name Jesus thank you for the wonderful name Jesus thank you for the wonderful name Jesus we bless you thank you thank you for the anointing that is in that name thank you for the salvation that is in that name thank you for the healing that is in that name thank you for the blessing that is in that name thank you for the deliverance that is in that name thank you Abba Father thank you Abba Father teach us your ways this morning teach us your ways this morning be you the sick deliver the oppressed this morning thank you Abba Father in Jesus precious name I pray and somebody say good amen this morning help me welcome at least five persons to church this morning tell them you're welcome I love you hallelujah hallelujah to God this morning hallelujah glory be to God I love you glory hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wonderful name, Jesus. That's what I'm looking at this morning. The wonderful name of Jesus. The wonderful what? of Jesus. Hallelujah. That name is the most used name on the surface of the earth. Even beyond the earth. It's also the most abused name. But that notwithstanding, we choose the right path. Hallelujah. It's the most criticized name. But that does not stop what the name carries. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of God this morning. Matthew's gospel chapter number one. Matthew's Gospel chapter number one. We want to welcome every family, every friend online this morning. The name of Jesus will answer positively in your life. Amen. Can you say a good amen this morning? Are you there? Read three scriptures this morning. We want to begin. We have started this series during the week. And um, we're going to add more. We're going to learn more. Verse 21. If you have it, say amen. amen. I say if you have it, say Amen. Verse 21, let's read together. I want to read. And Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's quickly run to um, Mark chapter 16. Just after Matthew is Mark chapter 16. Let's begin to read from verse 15. If you have it, say amen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. Somebody say in his name. In the name. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not, it shall not what? Hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody say amen. In my name, all these things will follow. Hallelujah. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak in the unique tongues. In my name, they shall take up serpents. In my name, they shall bring deadly things, it shall not hurt them. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. They shall lay their hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. Hallelujah. One more scripture, Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2. If you are there, say amen. Alright, you are not there, but I'm moving on quickly. Verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion of a man, 
he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore us god also has highly exalted him and given him what a name that is verse 9 which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father somebody say amen, amen. somebody say the wonderful name of jesus the wonderful name of jesus one will begin to look at this beyond the name of jesus beyond religion the name of jesus beyond that i go to church the name of jesus in the light of heaven the name of jesus in the light of god the name of jesus how it should be hallelujah we we began and let's recap a little bit then we add something amen during the week we looked at what is the meaning of name we looked at the meaning of name and from the scriptural perspective we say that name came from original greek word known as onoma and i say that from the if you are from the southern part of nigeria precisely maybe worry area you call it onome praise god glory be to god onoma that is actually what name means from the scripture now the question is that what is even onoma onoma simply means what authority and character so what is in a name is that every name carries what authority and carries what character hallelujah so onoma is what authority onoma is what character so by the time somebody is mentioning your name is provoking two things what and what authority and character hallelujah i say hallelujah we went ahead to add few things name stands for identification that's why they say they call you by your name what happened your tongue name stands for what identification the wonderful name of jesus so when they mention your name what happens your tongue so you identify by your name glory be to god i said glory be to god i said glory be to god we went ahead to look at something very very we are looking at the wonderful name of jesus hallelujah now what i had to look at what authority very important what is authority what is authority we say that authority is what authority is the right to command and be what obeyed the right to do what to command and be obeyed we're looking at this generally then we tie it to what we're studying the wonderful name of jesus everywhere oh jesus something happened people just call jesus and all of that some people just call it for fun some people just just call it but i believe god by the time we are done with what we are learning the next time you are going to mention the name of jesus you will not mention it casually again you mention it with a sense of revelation a sense of duty a sense of producing results the wonderful name of jesus hallelujah i say hallelujah authority is what we say that G name is what onoma and onoma means what authority and character we say that name is what identification follow me then we say that what is authority authority is what the right to command and be obeyed and let me quickly say this all right let me quickly say this now authority is also in levels and in grades but before i come to that listen i try to paint a clear picture of what authority is all about and we use the tra the traffic warden officer at the junction where there's a lot of traffic trying to control the traffic working there who appointed that man the government now when you look at the traffic warden officer you see him with his uniform am i right one of the things you need to take note of is that when you look at our traffic warden officer one of the things you see on on his cap is the nigerian coat of arm you see it in front of his cap 
that same coat of arm brothers and sisters when you look at our president sitting down behind him you will see the coat of arm on the chair where he is sitting you see the coat of arm that is the same coat of arm that is on the cap of what the traffic warden officer that that coat of arm is the authority backing him up that when he does his hand like this it doesn't matter whether you are driving the the the, the biggest car the car that is 250 million whether it's bulletproof car it does it's not it's not it's inconsequential it's not important as far as it's, it does like this what happened he said stop and if you don't stop what happens the law enforcement will arrest you why he has commanded and you have disobeyed are you hearing what i'm saying authority is what the right to command and be obeyed glory be to god so him you may be highly educated you may be far far more educated than him height you are taller than him in size you are fatter than him but there is an authority he's standing on to do what he's doing glory be to god so when he does like this everybody start moving cars start moving when he does like this if you slam your brake and come to a halt authority and let me quickly say this authority is in levels authority is in what levels let me use a system for example we have the local government counselor right or the ward counselors then we have the local government chairman right and child ladies we have what the governor then we have what the president now the authority that the the the, the, the local government carry uh, uh, command the local government chairman commands is what is stronger and higher than the word the counselor the counselor is just controlling what a smaller portion a word kind of some words or kind of just a smaller portion then the local government chairman controls what the whole local government then the authority the state governor carries is what is stronger and higher than what the local government chairman because his own is what the whole state now the authority the president or the prime minister carries is what is higher than the governor why he is in charge of the whole nation then among presidents are you with me this morning among president authority differs i hope you know among president like if you look at the entire world we have the g4 we have the g7 the g5 the g8 and all of that see that g you are seeing is a classification of the power of the nation are you getting what i'm saying are you getting what i'm saying so you can't compare the authority that the american president carries to some other countries am i saying the truth yeah so even among presidents authorities differs glory be to god so you need to know that now we say that onoma is what name is what authority and is what character when it comes to character before we define character character is not graded like authority you don't have small character big character 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 is positive or negative it's like coin head or tail it's like you have a good character you have bad character are you gonna say there, there are no middle grounds are you with me there are what no middle grounds it's either you have a good character or what a bad character so that's how character runs so what is character character is the sum total of who you are when they sum you up you know when you take something when i take this bible and put it on a scale uh, what is it going to give me it will give me the weight the sum total of this bible so the character of a man or a woman is the sum total of who you are so by the time you see by the time your character speaks it shows who you are whether you are tall whether you are short your character is the sum total of who you are somebody say amen, amen. somebody say amen. amen what is character character is the distinguishing mark or trait of your life that's why two persons don't have the same character even twins even twins when you check they don't behave the same do you still see a clear line of difference between the twins is the what is the distinguishing trait or mark of your life character character and i wrote down some here, something here quickly which is very very important character is character is the signature of your past is what the signature of your past 
Your character is the strength of your present. And your character is the voice of your future. I say that again. That, that character is what? The signature of your past. Is the strength of your present. And is what? The voice of your future. So when somebody looks at your character, he can, he, person can predict clearly where you are heading to. Except there is a change along the line. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Why is it the signature of your past? You know, when you sign something, let me give you a practical example. Have you ever been to the bank before and you go, you go to the bank and you take, um, they give you uh, a withdrawal slip. You fill it, you sign, and you give to them. The cashier will do like this. They say, the signature does not match. Go and sign again. I, I, was, I was in one of the commercial banks the other time. One young lady, well packaged, beautiful, clean. They, she signed the first one, no way. She signed the second one, no way. Yes, they now went and brought a plain sheet. The madam said, keep on trying. When you get the right one, I'll give you money. The girl was so frustrated that day. She signed, they, she, had, she signed the whole full plain sheet. She has not gotten the signature. Glory be to God. Because what you are writing and what is in that system need to match before they will be able to approve what you are doing. You see, your, your, your character is your signature. Anytime people see your signature, they say, this signature belongs to this person. So when they see your character, they say, this is Pastor Elijah. Amen? Amen. Are you going to say, my character is my signature. So it is my means of identification. You see, and your life, I said that your character is the strength of your present. You see, you want your life to be strong. I mean, the, the strength of who you are now is as a result of the character you are exhibiting. What your life is attracting right now is your character. Then your character is the voice of your future. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Why? Your character will lead you to your destination. My character will not lead you to your own destination. And your own character will not lead me to my own destination. It is your character that will lead you to what? To your destination. So, when somebody looks at your character, he can predict where you are heading to. And it's very, very important. And like the other time I said that one of the things we need to treat is not only to be binding Satan, binding Satan, we need to begin to work on our character because in the church today a lot of people have character crisis. Character what? Crisis. Some people don't even know that there is a conduct required of them in the church. You need to understand that. There is a conduct. If, you, if they employ you in a company, there is something your boss is expecting. A customer does not just enter and you start insulting the person. He says, me, I get big mouth. Hold your big mouth at home. It's not in this company. They will sack you. They will sack you that day. Why? Listen. We are talking about business that need to go forward here. That need to make profits. That need to expand. Attract more customers. He said, me, I get big mouth. Too. It is not in this company. It will be in your kitchen or in your bedroom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory be to God. So we need to, every one of us, we need to begin to, you see, character is something you build. And character don't jump on people. Listen to me and listen to me. God is not just responsible for your character. You are responsible for building your character. The character you want to see, you can build it. Are you understanding? And you use the word of God. You use prayer. You use all the tools, the Holy Spirit. You use self-discipline to do what? When I was sharing with you last week Sunday, I said there are certain things that happen. The best way to attend to that thing is to be silent. Are you understand? There are certain things that will happen. You're being silent will throw the whole situation into more confusion than you speaking. But some people, everything they must talk is not everything that you talk. There are certain things they just keep quiet. Probably they will be calling you fool. But they don't know that that silence you have kept is for something bigger. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Did you get me to this point? So we are tying this. We are tying, so having looked at the meaning of name and what name represents generally. We are looking at the wonderful name of Jesus. And to take this forward, I wrote down something here that all power and authority that Jesus had was invested in his name. You must know that. All the authority and power that Jesus had, he put it what he buried it what in his name. He put it in his name. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 he said what? And, and she shall bring forth a son. His name will be called Jesus. He shall save 
his people from their sin. We read in the book of Mark chapter 16, what did he say? In my name. Jesus said, speaking to the disciples, in my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick. And during the week, we try to demystify something, mentality that the church is running with. Please, when it comes to healing the sick, casting out devil, are you going saying? It is not for pastors. It's not what? There's this mentality we are running with. It is wrong. When it comes to healing, laying hands on the sick or praying for the sick, it's not for pastors. The Bible said it clearly in Mark where we read. He said, whosoever believe and is baptized shall be saved and whosoever does not believe shall be what shall be damned in my name which means in my name he began to mention what he began to mention the things that people that believe in his name we do so i don't know where we got this mentality that casting out devil is for pastor healing the sick is for pastor no the question this morning that do you believe ask your neighbor do you believe if your name if you believe if you are a believer in christ jesus then the authority and the power to do what to cast out devil to heal the sick is already in your life so it's now to know and to use it praise the lord i say praise the lord i say praise the lord I remember a few years ago, I was, I was not a pastor, but I gave my life to Christ. In the environment I was staying in the night, 2 a.m., one child started conversing. Praise the Lord. Oh, see, Holy Spirit has a, and we had a pastor living in that compound. The pastor traveled. So when they banged on pastor's door, bang, bang, pastor did not come out. Pastor has traveled. But I just read this mark as a, a young believer. He that believeth in my name shall do what? Shall lay their hands on the sick. Hey, the mother was already crying. I have to. I just finished. I was studying the book of Mark. I said, this thing did not mention pastor. It mentioned he that believed. Do I believe? Yes. I said, give me the child. The child was conversing. He was shaking. I carried the child. Close to it. I was even doing it. You know, new convert now with fear. I said, God, whether God will answer me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. <laughs> you know, Christianity is level by level. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I can't see. God has a way of honoring our faith because He knows the level of our faith. I carry the child. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, spirit of death. I, I close my eyes though, so that if the child dies, I can drop the child. <laughs> I, I have to close my eyes. Yes, I have to close my eyes. You know, when they, you see, some of you have not seen anything. Glory be to God. You, know, you see, you can laugh now. Amen. But it was not 2 a.m. It was not a, it, it was not child's play that day. When the child is already doing like this, the food they were giving the child has vomited everything. The eyes has already torn. And I've not prayed for somebody at that level. I have to carry the child and close my eyes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I was just shouting. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the child didn't see my faith came alive. This is a great man of God. This is a great, <laughs> this is a great man of God. Hallelujah. Now, but I learned lesson that when it comes to praying for the sick, casting out devil is not for the pastors. It's for he or she that believes in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I believe that God arranged that thing that day to teach me a lesson. The pastor in the compound traveled. He was not around. So I became the pastor. But you know what? The power of name. From that day, they started calling me pastor. I was not a pastor. I just gave my life to Christ. So when I come into the compound, a pastor, you have come back. I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. But from that day, everybody in the compound, pastor, you are welcome. I said, what kind of pastor? I told them they've not ordained me. But they say you are the one that prayed for that child that day. So you are already a pastor. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Please, let's take note of that. Somebody sit around you. You don't need to wait exercise your feet do what it's your child is sick your somebody sick around you the bible said he that believes in my name the question you need to ask yourself do i believe if i believe i have the authority somebody say amen yeah. so all powers 
and authority in, hallelujah that Jesus had is what invested in the name. He buried, Jesus buried his authority in his name. I'm trying to know, I want, I, want, I want to bring us to what we have. Because it's possible for you to have something and you don't know you have that thing. Hallelujah. It's possible for you to have something and not utilize it. Two, the, the measure of the ability of Jesus Christ is in the value we have in the name. If you have value for the name of Jesus, it will determine the ability that will flow through that name to work for you. Why? The sense of value will determine the flow of virtue. The sense of what? Value. Will determine what? The flow of virtue. The, the value attached to something will determine what you draw from that thing. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. The value attached to a thing, the value attached to the name of Jesus will determine the ability and the power that will be made what? Available to you. Very important. The wonderful name of Jesus. The wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God has given us something great. Something mighty. As a church. But it's quite unfortunate. That it's been underutilized. Some places it's not even used at all. The wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's my prayer that this day. This name will answer for you. We speak for you in the name of Jesus. Are, are, we, are we there now? Now let me quickly ask something. As well as we keep moving. Now listen. When we talk about Jesus here, let's understand that we are talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's get the total package. Yeah, Jesus Christ of what? Nazareth. Which means, Pastor, what are you trying to say? If you pray or you want to use the name and call Jesus Christ of Ikotekwene, it will not work. If you, it's not enough man. If you call the Jesus Christ of Oigo, it will not work. Why? That is not how heaven ordained it. It's what? Jesus Christ of Nazareth or Jesus of Nazareth. That is how you will use the name to pray. You don't call a Jesus of your village. Go to, go to, go to the scripture. Let's, let's run through scripture. Matthew, Matthew's Gospel chapter 2. Matthew's Gospel chapter 2. Are we all there? Let's read together. Look at verse number 23, everybody. 223. One to read. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a Nazareth. Where is he from? Nazareth. He should be called Nazareth. I'm what? A Nigerian. I, I, I'm from Nigeria, so I should be called what? A Nigerian. Glory be to God. Run to Mark. Flip over to Mark chapter 1. Are you understanding what we are saying this morning? There's a reason I, I have to... Mark chapter number 1 verse 9, everybody. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from what? Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Do you hear that? He came from where? Nazareth of Galilee. Glory be to God. Chapter 10 verse 47, Mark. Chapter 10, open your Bible. Make sure you're opening your Bible. Make sure you're writing something down. Go back and study. Chapter number 10 verse 47, are you there? Let's read. One to read. And when he heard that it was Jesus of what? Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Acts of the Apostle, flip over quickly. Acts of the Apostle chapter 2, verse 22. If you have it, say amen. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Jesus of what? Nazareth. One more scripture. Flip over to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter number 3, verse 6. What did he say? Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Now, from all this scripture, did you hear Jesus of Capernaum? What did they call him? Jesus of Nazareth. So, if you do your own prayer and call it Jesus of your village, it will not work. Why? He didn't come from there. Heaven did not obtain the path. If heaven wanted it to be Jesus of Nigeria, it would have been Jesus of Nigeria. 
But God will tell me that the word of Israel, it will be what? Jesus of Nazareth. Remember that Nazareth is a very small and a tiny community. That's why when they told, was it Nathaniel? Yeah. They told him that we have found the Messiah. You see, from the says from Nazareth, say, can anything good come from Nazareth? Please listen to me and listen to me very well. When you are dealing with God, God is not a politician. God does not respect race. God does not respect tribe. He is the almighty God. He is the God of all. That's why listen to me, whether you are black or whether you are white, that should not be a limitation if you know Jesus. Just say amen this morning. Why? We are, God is not a racist. God is not a tribalistic man. God does not practice nepotism. God does not know whether you are from this tribe or you are not from this tribe. It's the almighty God. They say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Something good has come out of Nazareth and it has become generational. I pray that something good will come out of you that will turn your world around. That amen did not sound like people that came to church this morning. Something great will proceed out of your life that will change the whole world. Shall you better amen this morning? Jesus of Nazareth. Now, during the week, I'm a reason why I'm sure during the week, I was reading something online. Don't laugh. <laughs> I was reading something online that only me, I stayed, I was laughing. I don't want to mention the name of the country, but one of the Eastern African countries, one man rose up and said, He's a Messiah. He has members who is a prophet. He said, He's a Messiah. He has many followers. Okay. The followers told him, that Easter is coming. 7th, 8th, 9th of April is Easter. The Messiah, they told us before you came, they killed him during Easter. And during Easter Sunday morning, he rose. For now you have told us that you are the Messiah, we are following you. During Easter, we will kill you. I said, oh, yeah. now it's not, I'm not telling you, it's not a story, it's not a prank. I'm telling you a story I was reading online. And I know it was not fake news. They say Easter is the Messiah they told us about. They killed him during Easter. And during Easter morning, he rose. Now that we have been following you, you say you are the Messiah. We will kill you. We will kill you the way they killed the other one. So that you will rise. When you rise, we now know that you are the true Messiah. Then the prophet advised himself the next day and went to a police station. That his life is under a threat. <laughs> Are you, are you saying? Are you, that his life is what? That police should come. <laughs> police should come for a rescue. That his life is other word, a threat. But you told them you are the Messiah. And there's a pattern Messiah followed. So you have to follow that. Hallelujah. Listen to me and listen to me very well. What is not the truth can never be the truth. And why am I bringing this story? You know, there are some quarters today that even because miracles are happening, the blind eyes are seen, the, the lame they are walking, but the name of Jesus is not even mentioned. And people think that is Christianity. That is not Christianity, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Yeah. I told you something that a native doctor can come around this environment and conjure and conjure. Rain can start falling this point, and rain is not falling this point. But that does not mean that it is God. There are bases to know that things, this thing is God. One, it must have the word origin. The word of God must be there. The spirit of God must be there. The name of Jesus must be there. All authority has been invested in that name. Let's look at one more scripture. Then we add a few things. Go to Matthew's gospel. Chapter 28. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The wonderful name of Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. I didn't hear you call it Jesus. Okay, are you there? Verse number 18. Matthew's gospel chapter 28, 18. He said, and Jesus said, make him and speak unto them, saying, all power. Can I hear you say all power? Is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Do you hear that? What all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore. Jesus invested his power and his authority in his name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Did you get me up to this point this morning? Now question as we add some more. How did Jesus
Jesus obtain this wonderful name? Or how did Jesus obtain this excellent name? Now, there are three ways men get their names. How many ways? Three important ways and powerful ways that people get their name. One, praise the Lord. Men are born to a great name like kings. Men are born what? People are born to a great name like kings. Hallelujah. For example, you know in our environment, there are some families that they are the king makers. There are some other families that are what? They are the king holders. Are you going to say, if you are born into that family, kingship will reach you. If you are born into that family, automatically you become what? A prince. Or a princess. So, the, one of the ways people get their name is what? Is what? They are born into it. They are what? Born into it. The way you are, you are I, the guy says something wrong. I'm just using our culture as an example. There are, you go to many of our cultures, there are families. It doesn't live that there are families that what? This is a king kingship family are you gonna the royal family so when this one dies it enters the hand of this one it can't move from this family it's just there rotating so one of the ways people obtain their name is what they are born into that name like kings two through achievement people get great name through what achievement just as today you there are names you hear is you know that this name they didn't come from a royal family but this is out of what mere achievement it was merited they worked for it and their names i don't want to mention but if you can check some names there are some names that are very prominent especially if you go to the internet today there are some names you don't need to add doctor you don't need to add pastor you don't need to add engineer just type the first three words the name will come out i don't know i don't know what i'm saying Go to the internet today. There are some names. Maybe you are, you are trying to get the spelling. Now, is is now Google or whatever we begin to suggest to you? Are you really talking about this person? Are you trying to get so people get their name because what? Through what? Through achievement, and you will be an achiever. I say you will end up as an achiever. Oh, you are not saying amen. You want to end up as a mediocre. I say you will end up as an achiever. You will end up as an achiever in your life. No matter your profession, no matter what God has called you to do, get ready because the name of Jesus will make you an achiever. Shout a better amen. So, I, people get their name because they are born into it. People get their name through what? Achievement. And number three, people get their name because it's conferred on them. It's put on them. People get their name through what? Confirm it. They confer the name. So, three ways people get their name. They are born into it too. They achieve it. It's confirmed. And listen to me. We're going to look at this within this time limit. Jesus passed through this three test and got his name based on this three platform made available to everybody. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Jesus got his wonderful name through inheritance. Through what? Inheritance. Let's go to Hebrews. Run there. Hebrews chapter number one. Everybody, Hebrews, Hebrews, wonderful name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter one. Are we all there? Let's begin to read. Hebrews chapter number one, verse one to six. He said, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, had in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the words, the words, who been the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had made himself, when he has what, by himself touched our sins and sat down at the right hand of God, the majesty on high. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Be made so much better than the angels. So he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name by what inheritance he obtained what a more excellent name by what inheritance he obtained what a more excellent name verse number five for unto which of the angels said at any time thou art my son this day have i begotten thee father and he 
This day have I what? Because in, and again, I will be unto him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. Verse number six. And again, when he bringeth into the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Somebody say a good amen this morning. Amen. Did you hear that? There are a few things I want you to look at in that scripture. One, he called, he made a statement about Jesus, and he said something very, very important. He called, he said that he has obtained an excellent name more than angels. Anytime I read this scripture, I remember when I gave my life to Christ newly. The teachings about angels would have destroyed my Christian life. I don't know where it would have been. My sister has traveled with a husband. I was only one at home. He gave me his room key. He said, I wanted to clean my, my room and all of that and lock it up. I had my own room. So at the course of cleaning, taking care of the place, I saw a book. I kept the book. After cleaning, I sat down in the morning and started reading. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This book was on angels. This man wrote on angels. He mentioned all, all the names of angels in the Bible. Now he began to share how to worship angels. How to worship angels. How a man is supposed to worship angels. And all of that and all of that. And that day was our Bible study. It's good to go to a church where they teach you the word of God. Irrespective of anything. I go to church. My pastor was teaching he said that as, he, as a Christian, you are not to worship angels. That threw me to more confusion. The book I just read showed me how to worship angels. Now you are saying, now what we are saying that we don't need to worship angels. I was so confused after I had to go and meet the pastor. The pastor explained to me, explained to me, and gave me some scriptures. I needed to go back and sit down. I would have destroyed my Christian testimony how to worship angels. The Bible said that Jesus has obtained what? A more excellent name than angels. And I've said this again and again. You need to understand how Bible language is being used. I said that if you read the scripture and the Bible said the angel of the Lord. One of the things you notice about the angel of the Lord. I've said it on this altar. Is that the angel of the Lord will accept worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When God appears in angelic form, he, that angel will accept worship. But when it is not God, it's just a general angel, that angel will not accept worship. That's why you need to know. But because the a name angel was attached to him, are you hearing what I'm saying? They will just think that it's an ordinary angel. That is God appearing in angelic form. I'll give you one example. Now, look at what happened to Joshua. Joshua. You know, there was war and all of that. Joshua appeared. And when Joshua appeared, what did he do? Joshua was standing with sword. An angel appeared. Joshua was battle ready. Joshua pulled out his sword. Wanted to strike down the angel. What? And the angel showed up. And now introduced himself. What did he do? He pulled back his sword. And put it back. And bowed down to worship the angel. The angel accepted the worship. That is God in angelic form. We are not to worship angel. What of Moses? When God appeared in angelic form in the burning bush, what happened? He said, remove your shoes. Where you are standing is a holy ground. Moses removes his and bowed and worshipped. And it was accepted. But look at Revelation chapter number 1. They put, according to Bible scholars, they have taken John, the beloved, tried to kill him, they couldn't kill him. They tried to feed him to animals, they couldn't feed him to animals. They poured hot oil and put John. They brought out John. John was alive. They said, this one has passed our level. They took John and dropped him in, in at what we call evil forest in this kind of a world. An island of Patmos. Let white animals eat up John. All of a sudden, the angel appeared. What did John do? Read John chapter number, uh, Revelation chapter number 1 from verse number 3 and 4 and 5. John bowed down to worship the angel. What did he say? He said, don't worship me. I am what? Your fellow servant. So this is not God in angelic form. This is just one of the angels. He said, John, don't bow down to worship me. Why? Angels are not to take worship. So anybody that starts teaching you whatever book or whatever, you know, there's a lot of things going on and people are preaching. Teaching you how to worship angel. It is anti, anti Christ teaching. It's not scriptural. It's anti-scripture to worship angel. I understand. Somebody say what, 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 of, what the Bible wrote in the book of Psalms that he has made him a little lower than angels. I told you, please get study Bible and study along with me. If you go to the original word used here, that word angel is what? Elohim. 
God has made man a little lower than what? Elohim. But the old King James version used what? Angel. So if you don't do a deep study, you think that God said what? That man has been made what? A little lower than angel. Man is not lower than angel. Angel is lower than man. Angel is lower than a believer. That's why he said, I will give angels charge over you. Can I ask you a question? Can a governor become a bodyguard to his security man? Are you going to say? No, no. He is a governor, so he should have oddlies and security around him. So we are the governors. The angels are our security. So we keep my angel charge over you. They will keep you. You will not dash your foot against the stone. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That's why I'm challenging you to know how to instruct these angels. When you begin to speak the word of God, see, angels don't understand complaint. They don't understand cashless society. They don't understand any negative. What the language they hear is what? The language of God's word. So anytime the word of God is not in your mouth, your angels will not be activated. But when the word of God is in your mouth, you activate them. At times you personally give them assignment. Enter in charge of this. Go and get this thing done. And they will do it. They will make it happen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He said he has given him a more excellent name than the angels. Take note of that. He called Jesus the hair of things. This scripture we read in Hebrews. Now who is a hair? A hair is a person that has a right to inheritance. Two. He called Jesus the express image of God. That's why if you read the book of John, they came to him. They said, Master, the disciples came to him, show us the father. Show us the father. I say, oh, you have been with me all this while and you don't know the father. If you have seen me, ah, you have seen what? The father. Let me tell you something. Christianity, we are coming to a point where your Christian name might not to matter. Where the size of Bible you carry does not matter. You are coming to a point when they look at you, they have to see Jesus. When just merely looking at you, Something will transpire in the realm of the spirit. They know that this person is not an ordinary man. If we don't work our Christianity to that point, listen, the way the world is going, Christianity will be intimidated. We are somebody that is sick we, we ch and look at your face. Sickness will disappear. Oh, nobody's saying amen this morning. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is where we begin to program our Christian lives to. Somebody mistakenly hug you and there's cancer. He says, as I hugged you, the cancer left Listen, it's not going to come by all this um, religious game. No. It's not going to come by all this compromise and let's just use church to cover up. It's going to come by sincerity of purpose, sincerity of worship, revelation and faith in the God who has having. He said Jesus is the express image of God. He said you people have been with me all this while. You don't know the Father. If you have seen me, look at your neighbor say from today. When you see me, you have seen the Father. Are you sure? Yeah. When we see you, we see the Father. Yeah. Glory be to God. We got to see the Father in your dressing, in your appearance. We got to see the Father in your words. We got to see the Father in your eyes. We got to see the Father in your action. We got to see the Father in the steps you take. Oh, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father because I am the express image of the Father. Somebody say Amen. amen. You made another statement there. It called Jesus what? The brightness of God. The basic. The, the Bible in basic English, the BBE translation, it said Jesus is the outshining of God. The what? The outshining of God. The outshining of God. What Jesus is radiating is the Father. The love of the Father. The personality of the Father. The wisdom of the Father. Hallelujah. So when I become a Christian, that is what I should duplicate. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. But the question this morning, how did Jesus get his name by inheritance? Look at, look at that Hebrews. Look at that Hebrews. Are we learning something this morning? Hebrews chapter number one. Hallelujah. Look at verse number four and five. He said, be made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Five. For unto which of the angels and said he that what? At any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten Hallelujah. Amen. And again, I will be unto him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So when did Jesus begot his name? I've had a teaching that Samuel said, Jesus got his name in heaven. No, in heaven he's all things there. He doesn't need 
any inheritance there. So we say Jesus got his name when he came on earth. Jesus did not get his name when he came on earth. Why? If you read the book of Philippians, he said that when I came on earth, I did what? I left all the glory. I left all my glory and came down. When did he get his name? That is what the scripture is saying. He got his name. Remember that when he came on earth, they killed him. Do you believe that they killed him? I said, do you believe that they killed him? Yes, they killed him. And I've tried to interpret what happened between the cross and the grave in one of the, our teachings. For the sake of time, I will not go there. But all of us believe that he died. Now, remember the other time I showed you that every religion, let's, let's even say people call Christianity religion. Let's, let's, but every religion has what they call the pillars of that religion. Christianity has pillars. And I told you, whatever environment you find yourself, whether it's packaged with AC, packaged with rock, if things begin to happen in that environment and you are not finding the pillars of Christianity being talked about, I doubt whether you are actually in the wrong place. Because no matter what anybody preaches and you don't believe in the bodily death of Jesus and bodily resurrection of Jesus, then there's something wrong somewhere. Those are the pillars of Christianity. Are you going to say, if you don't believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what you are preaching. Are you going to say, it doesn't matter what you are preaching. That is, is not, is not, is, you are not touching the pillar, the pillar of Christianity. Anyone that says he's a Christian must believe what? In virgin birth. It doesn't matter whether the person is a professor of theology and is arguing. Christianity is not for argument. Christianity is for manifestation. Are you going to say, it's not for argument. That's why I don't hang around people that uh, they are arguing. The Bible is not an argumentative textbook. The Bible is a practical and a manifesting book. Glory be to God. This book is more than an encyclopedia. Hallelujah. How did Jesus get his name? The Bible says he got his name, he inherited his name when he was begotten of the Father. It was not when he was in heaven. It was not when he was on earth. It was when he rose. When he conquered death. Hallelujah. When he conquered death. Conquered sin. Conquered disease. Came up triumphantly. As he rose. Hallelujah. What happened? He inherited that name. Why? Because there was a name that nobody knew about. But Jesus had come to conquer certain things and inherit that name. Which means if any other person did that, the person would have been the person to inherit the name. Are you with, are you with me? So when did Jesus inherit his name? When he was raised from the dead. That is what Hebrew says. When he was begotten of the Father. He conquered death. Remember, we said that there are three kinds of death, right? Physical death, spiritual death, and what? Second death. Jesus conquered all of them. The physical death where the spirit of a man is separated from the body. The body lies, life, lies life, lifeless. Phys uh, uh, spiritual death is what? When man, when the spirit of man ceases to relate and have fellowship with the spirit of God. Like what happened to Adam? The Bible said any day you eat of this fruit, what will happen? You will die. But the Bible said he died. Did he die physically? No. Adam had a wife. The wife, they produced children. They were eating. They were doing all, that, all kinds of things. They were tilling ground and all of that. So, Adam was alive, but he was a walking corpse. Why? His spirit, I mean, his spirit was disconnected from what? From fellowship and relationship with the spirit of God. That is spiritual death. And that's why we need to win souls, because many people are under spiritual death. The second one is what? The second death. That is the death, what? That is the death that no man will have opportunity to repent. It's, the, it's an internal death. If you read the book of Revelation, it said what? It said that death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. So there's nobody that died without Christ that is in any lake of fire. The lake of fire time will come after the great day, after the great judgment. He said, death and what? Hell will be cast what? into the lake of fire. That time, no prayer. No prayer. That's why we need evangelism now. That time, no prayer can work again. There's no prayer. You know, they say, you know, those days we're in school. All these funny, funny boys in the school. They say, you see, when, I get, when we're preaching to them, they say, listen, pastor, all those of you, SU boys, when I go to hell, leave me, let me go. My forefather will just come and fling me from hell and I'll just jump into heaven. <laughs> Nobody will be able to fling you from there. Hallelujah. Because the person himself is finding his way out. 
<laughs> the person has not found his way out, so how can he carry you? Glory be to God. Are you hearing saying? Jesus conquered the prayer. He conquered physical death. He conquered spiritual death. He conquered second death. When he conquered second death, the Bible said that great morning, they ran to the grave. Mary Magdalene and the rest of them, when they came to the grave, they just saw an angel sitting on a stone. He said, we are looking for Jesus. He said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Ah, he is risen. He said, he's risen. Go and tell your brethren in Galilee, he is alive. When that happened, when Jesus now took on, Jesus now took on immortality. I love to read about Jesus at the resurrection or after resurrection. The Bible said that once upon a time, the Jews, they were threatening the disciples. They were afraid their master is gone, their comforter is gone. The man they had hope on, they locked themselves. All of a sudden, Jesus showed up. He is here. The windows were locked. The doors were locked. He doesn't need windows this time around. He doesn't need doors this time around. Mortality has put on immortality. He has raised he has resurrected. He doesn't need barrier. No barrier could hold him. And someday, brothers and sisters, the Bible said, at the, at the, at the sound of the last trump, within the twinkling of an eye, when this mortality will put on immortality, this corruptible will put on incorruptible, it shall be brought to pass. Death is swallowed up in victory. Because some of us, you have lost a loved one. You feel, you weep. But I believe God that someday, Death will be, will be put to death permanently. There will no longer be death again. Jesus conquered death and rose. And when he rose, he inherited a name. So he got his name by inheritance. I'm out of time this morning. Two, Jesus got his name by inheritance, number one, right? Number two, how did he get his name? He got his name. His name was bestowed on him, was conferred on him. I need to mention this, and it's very, very important. If you read the book of First Peter, Philippians, where we read, he said that God has given him a name that is above every other name. That the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, I've been meditating on the, on the scripture, every knee in heaven must bow. Every knee on earth must bow. Every knee, I want to tell you something. I'll be stopping in a moment. They will continue. During the week, listen. Every knee on earth, underneath the earth, must every tongue in these three regions must do what? Must bow. Glory be to God. I said, Glory be to God. I said, Glory be to God. Now follow me a little bit. When I was meditating on this scripture, brothers and sisters, please get this. Which means, outside human beings, there are other beings. Do you hear that? At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Where? In heaven, on earth, underneath the earth. I came to tell you that outside human beings, there are what? There are other beings. And you need to you need to you need to get to know that. Hallelujah. There are what? Other beings. But the joy of it is this. A name has been given to the church called Jesus. That if I can mention that name, it doesn't matter where the pain is operating from. It must do what? It must bow. It doesn't matter the, where the tongue is talking from. The tongue must do what? Confess that Jesus is Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. My greatest joy this morning is that the name of Jesus reigns in the three words that affect man. Man lives on earth. Are you understand? Man lives on earth. But not only that man lives on earth, the Bible mentioned what the heavenly being. He mentioned another word, which is underneath the earth. And these three words affect man's activities. It affects the activities of man. But the Bible says when we give when we become born again, when we receive Christ as our Lord and, uh, and Savior, we inherit the name of Jesus. That whatever, wherever anything is functioning from, 
whether in heavens whether on earth whether underneath the earth that those things must bow to the name of jesus christ glory be to god i said glory be to god i said glory be to god he jesus did what jesus was bestowed his name they conferred that name on him he inherited the name and the name was conferred on him glory be to god amen and can i tell you something if you agree with me that the authority jesus's authority and power is invested in his name why did he make those investments for the sake of the church jesus did not make those investments for himself that's why i'm going to teach you the connection between the name of jesus and our prayer you know some people pray they say for his name's sake now we have people pray now. they are concluding prayer they pray father we thank you this 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 all this we ask for his name's sake sir you are not doing it right there is nothing you are asking god for that is for christ's sake anything you are asking is for your sake but many people see at times we just get used to certain things all these all these things we ask for his name's sake no he has already done everything to secure a name he secured that name and did what and handed it over to church glory be to god he handed it over he made all the investment or you know in, at least let me tell you something you know, let me give you an example. Then I will, 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 will pray. Listen. Look at what Jesus did with his name. It's just like a man went somewhere, very rich, bought landed property, bought virgin land, houses, bought, you know, when shares used to rain, bought shares and all of that, and just bought cars. And just invited you. Some parents do that. And many of us parents were going to do that. Say amen. amen. Just invited the son. Sit down. Bring out all the certificates. Bring out all the landed property. Bring out all the documents. He said all these things. I did what I did is for you. Jesus did everything he did. He invested his power, his personality, his glory, his healing, his everything, his prosperity, his blessing. He invested it all in his name and did what? And handed it over to the church. That's why I say, he that believeth in my name, he will do this, do this. So we don't pray and say, for his name's sake. Uh -uh. It's not for his sake, it's for our sake. Finally, before we pray, how did Jesus get his name? Jesus got his name by conquest. One, by inheritance. Two, by what? It was conferred. Three, by what? Conquest. By what? Conquest. He got it by what? Conquest. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Look up here. Look up here. Before you talk to God. How did Jesus get his name by conquest? Remember. Remember that when Jesus. Look up here. When Jesus was buried, some people have mentality that he was just lying in the coffins for in the in the grave for three days. After three days, he rose. No, tell your neighbor no. When they buried Jesus, do you know what he did? He went to hell. He did what? He went to hell. And when he got into hell, all the demon, Lucifer, all of them, they were all celebrating. First of all, when he died on the cross, they were happy. When they buried him, they were happy. But one day, those three days, we say Good Friday, Good Saturday, Easter Resurrection. Before the resurrection, something happened. That thing took place in the realm of the spirit. It's not physical thing. It was a war. All those times that Jesus, they buried Jesus, he was not lying down inside the coffin like this. He walked straight in the realm of the spirit to hell. And when they got to hell, they were happy. Oh, this, this deceiver has come here. There was a physical combat battle. If you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, very well you see. All the hosts of demons came on Jesus. Please notice this. Jesus did not go to hell as the son of God. He went to hell as the son of man. Man's representative. Because if he gets there as the son of God, they can't fight they can't fight him 
hallelujah they are too small he went there as the son of man and when he got in there they all came on him they grabbed him now that you have come into our camp you will not go what the bible said he did what he threw them off they came and grabbed him he threw them off and when they discovered they couldn't handle him, he walked up to their master now that you people cannot handle me i need the key of death i need the key of 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 of, of her i they 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 are king or they are mr lucifer handed over all of that glory be to god to him they locked praise god and he walked out of that place with the key of death with the key of hell that's why if you read the book of Colossians chapter number 2 verse 14 say what having disarmed what principalities and powers he made an open show of them i like one of the translations he said having paralyzed principalities and powers you don't just paralyze something like that there was a warfare that made him to weaken them glory be to god jesus got his name through what through conquest he conquered that's why paul could write that in christ jesus we are more than a conqueror jesus conquered and made us more than conquerors they're not the same thing he did the he did the fight we are celebrating the victory of the fight are you gonna say it's not like when david killed goliath what did the women do the women sang the song was was it the women that killed goliath no they were singing the song of victory of what david did that is that is that's what happened to us we are we are what celebrated the victory of jesus he did the warfare hallelujah he got his name through conquest he conquered and they have to confer name of the person that was able to deal with hell and deal with death jesus got his name through inheritance through god he was conferred on him and he got his name through what conquest ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you this so that when you say you are doing warfare the bible says we we'll wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities powers and remember what i said what is our warfare do you remember what i said before we pray what is our warfare our warfare is not a um, um they are pursuing me i must pursue them back the greatest warfare we need as christian is what is the ability to do what to maintain to sustain and to retain what christ has finished for us that is where our warfare is he has finished the battle our own is to enforce what he has done hallelujah I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Through conquest. And it said that we are more than conquerors. Look at yourself say I'm more than conquerors. So we're going to pray just one prayer this morning. Spirit of the living God. Thank you. Hallelujah. But let me add this. How would this name work? So that we can use it and talk to God in two minutes. And we are done. How would this name work? The name of Jesus will begin to work for you by revelation. By what? I'll stress on that when we come back. If you don't have the revelation of the name of Jesus, it may you just be calling it. Everything in the kingdom works by revelation. And I say, what is revelation? Revelation is what apocalypse, removal of cover. I've, I've explained it again and again. You enter a place, there's a total darkness. All of a sudden, light comes. Everything becomes bright. Have it. That's why Paul pray for the church in Ephesus that God should enlighten their eyes of understanding that they will understand one of the things they need to understand is the power buried in this name when I have revelation revelation will give birth to faith so that by revelation I can call the name of Jesus by faith hallelujah hallelujah I believe God by the time we are done with this series as you mention the name of Jesus there will be a testimony Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. There will be a testimony. Lift up your hands, everybody. Just lift up those hands. Just briefly speak to the Lord this morning. Briefly speak to the Lord this morning. Just briefly talk to God this morning. Just wave those hands and bless him. Thank you for the wonderful name you have given to me. Thank you for the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you for giving me this wonderful name, oh God. Thank you for giving me this wonderful name. Thank you for giving us this wonderful name called Jesus. Shalabakatana. Rabatala kata shatana. Hebala kata la pratu shatana bai. Oh, rabatale kasuta. Hebala kata la kata pagadu shatana. 
Libra Anta Lika Libra Anta Libra Asuta Labaya Shika Labra Anta Are you talking to God? Are you talking to God? Please just talk to God Lord Lord Open my understanding I receive revelation About the name Jesus I receive the revelation About the authority buried in this name I receive the revelation about the healing that is in this name. I receive revelation about the blessing that is in this name. Lord, the name of Jesus. Lord, the name of Jesus. That name will speak for me in my absence, in my presence. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us a name. 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 It's called Jesus. It's called Jesus. By that mention of that name, as I step into this week, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Every sickness should bow, every attack should bow, every manipulation should bow, every hardship should bow. Oh God, every barrenness should bow, every weakness should bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. Lord, I hold on to that name this week. I hold on to that name, Jesus. I receive revelation and insight about the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. We're going to call that name, everybody, join your hand with somebody. We're going to call it just seven times. And listen, listen. Before you call it, if you are sick, please, uh, there's no laying on of hands. As you call that name, with what we have started sharing, that sickness will leave your body. That amen is not sounding like people that are there. We are going to call that name Jesus seven times. Whatever pain you came with, no laying on of hand, it will go. Hallelujah. Are you ready? I said, Are you ready? One. Oh, we are, we are not, he said, He told me you are ready, and you are not ready. Hallelujah. One. Well, you are not still not, you are not ready. I want that pain you came in with, that sickness to disappear. It's, see, it's no longer time to just call Jesus. Oh, but I Jesus, say, oh, Jesus. No, 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 no. It's time as you call that name with the understanding you are getting, you are sure that something is happening. Are you ready? I want you to call it by faith and with all the strength you have. One, two, go. Jesus. Two. Five, six, please get ready for the final time. Seven, place your right hand on your forehead. Just stand where you are. Receive everything you are looking for this season. Let your right hand be there. Is it healing? The name of Jesus is bringing it to you. All over this place, is it job? See it is done. Is it open doors? Is it lifted? See it is done. See it done. See it done in the name of Jesus. See it done. It's not in any man's name. He said, no name has been given to any man on earth where we will be saved except through that name. Are you seeing something this morning? That name, by that name, your testimony is established. Healing in your body. Everyone with any trace of sickness, trace of disease and ailment, terminal diseases, that name you have mentioned is gone forever. To never return. Eye issues gone. Blood issues gone. High plate blood pressure gone, cancer gone, pain gone, it is gone forever. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Keep your hand there, Father, for all our friends online this morning, every family on site this morning. Thank you for giving us a name. By that name this morning, I decree that they step into a new level. By that name this morning, they step into their healings. By that name this morning, they step into their deliverance. 
They are by in that name this morning. They step into a new job, a new contract, a new open door, a new revival, a new understanding, a new revelation, a new answer, a new connection in the name of Jesus. May the name of Jesus put a testimony in your mouth this week. I say, may the name of Jesus put a testimony in your mouth this week. Every step you take in the name of Jesus will seem answered this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you. Your testimony is the one we are sharing tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Go in that name. The name of Jesus is the labor on you. And by this, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Your week is blessed. I say your week is blessed. 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 So shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and thank him, everybody. Hallelujah. Just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you. In the name of Jesus. Let me look at somebody say that name is working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those who have your